it soaks in there really nice and when it soaks in there it just it all looks kind of uniform and the same and then you can see where you, you can kind of see here it pushed that bead in there really good all the way around it that bead got pushed in there real real good I like it came out real good so now I'll do the other side and it should push in real good except for this time I'll be going uphill I'm about to tackle this side show you what it looks like here no funny business real business I don't really want to wield it, but it's just a bunch of like soot from the rod. But I'm gonna fire up right here, and go uphill with this. So I'm gonna have to drop my heat though for sure. I think I'm gonna drop it back down to about uh, 45. That's about 125 amps. That's what I'll run the 1 8 at. We'll see if it's too hot or too cold. I'll know right off the bat. My position and watch. A little wild, a little crazy style. Kind of spread my legs and use my knee to do this. You know, I need to be like right here. A lot of people like to be down on their knees. I mean, you can. It's just how I'm comfortable doing it. Oh yeah, 125 amps burning beautifully. Ain't too bad, ain't too bad. <coughs> I like it. Now look, I always like to bend my rod just a little like that. You know, when I'm going up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I forgot to say something, uh, huh, I never switched it to uphill mode, left it in downhill mode. You can do that, but you know, sometimes I suggest you putting it in uphill mode just to be safe. Um, looks like there might be a pinhole here, I want to show you this, guys, but it's usually not, but we'll go ahead and grind into it and show you guys it's not, if it is, it, I mean it is what it is, but to me it's not, and uh, you'll notice when I fire up, I'll kind of start up here and fire up here. That's getting the rod nice and hot. You know, preheat these rods too. They're supposed to be preheated. I fire it up to kind of light it up. Not really necessarily get the rod hot, but to get the arc part of the rod right here hot and burning properly. So that way when I drop down into where I, I took off or where I left off, I can do a nice little good tie-in with a hot puddle. You know, and then I can burn out whatever's there. Because I leave a little bit of slag here and I'll show you guys what I leave here and what I fire up on. Because I'm confident enough that I fire it up, I can burn that trash out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So a lot of times people think that right there is a, uh, it's like porosity, right? They get scared. They go, oh, that's porosity right there. You see where I'm pointing? Right there in the center where I left off. Now I'll leave all that slag in there. I won't buff it off. I'll, I'll fire up up here. I'll get it started. I'll slow down. And then once I get a good hot puddle, I'll get right here and then I'll take off. Okay. So I grinded it to show you that there, there's nothing, there was nothing in there. It looked like a little tiny hole and then it just it just disappeared and so whatever that is right there that'll burn out you know there's that that little bit of slag right there that'll burn out you can burn that out as long as you fire up up here and drag it down and then when you get here take off from here and then start going up and the bead the bead I mean the beads coming out good it's pushing it in there nice I even overlap it on the top too. You'll notice on the low high, I went a little further than a, I stopped. And that was like one, two, three, four, I think five rods. That was five rods for that low high. That bead went in there real nice.
So here you go, buffed off that slag for you for that hot pass for that one eighth. And remember, the hot pass is not, I mean, you can make it, you'll eventually make it look pretty, but I mean, that hot pass is for one thing, and that's to burn out the trash. And see, I got a little bit of slag in the side of it there, that low high slag. Man, I ain't worried about that. I burned that little slag out. I'm gonna be burning so hot on this next pass, I'm gonna try to fill it up. Now, notice I'm a little more thicker on that side than I am my downhill side so it might take me more to fill up on my downhill but my downhill I'm getting ready to switch over to five millimeter now and I'll finish it with five mils and then this one I'll finish with one eighth and um, probably 332 cap I don't know why I just like slicking out with 332 cap and now on my downhill side I'm gonna use the uh, five millimeters and what I'll do is I'll just go down one side and then I'll come up the other side with one eighth go down the other side with downhill and then keep coming up and going down and so I'll put it on hyperlapse and I'll just show you how I kind of do it until I get it flushed out and then I'll show you what it looks like flushed out and then I'm gonna show you my cap. So here it is now that I got it all filled up. You can see here I did like, I did one big fat pass down it and then I stacked one on top of it because I needed it to be somewhat flush and it wasn't so flushed up there, it was kind of cut. And then on this side where I did my low high, I just did one pass, one weave pass. I haven't knocked the slag off it, I just wanted to show you with the slag on it. So that's the difference. And what I'll do now is I'll fire up with my downhill like this and start doing my downhill and then tie into it file here. Chip out, chip away my slag. And this ain't even the prettiness yet. Honestly, I mean, I don't do this for prettiness and I'm actually, man, I'm a little rough there. <laughs> I'm super rough. And I haven't ran this blow high in a minute. But I think it'll be enough to get a nice good cap on there. If you don't like it and it's kind of lumpy in some spots like right there, just take your grinder and just take it down. I mean, there's no shame in that. Make sure you get a good slick appearance because see how flush that is compared to that donkey. Yeah, cut that down. I was good. I'm out here practicing on this anyway. So you can see I took down a couple spots there on that low high side. Like I, I'm not worried about that. People might think you're not burning that out, but that's nothing. See, I took down some. Yeah, no shame, man. I mean, get it flush. Get it where you like it. I don't have any problem with this downhill. I'm more equipped with my downhill right now. I don't know why. I just, I love downhill, but even on my low high side, I took it down, you know, on a couple spots there because I was just a little bit too overfill. Yep. Had, had to grind it down. Man, no shame in it. Get it flat. Get it flat all the way around so when you're running that cap, you know, you're flush with the pipe. The bead's still looking good in there. Oh yeah, good bead. What I do is I run the first pass with my downhill. I'll turn my downhill down just a little bit to get a nice pretty cap presentation. Uh, see where I'm at. I'm at 60, so I'll go ahead and turn it down to about 55. Now it's not 55 amps, remember. The settings on my machine here. So this will be my first pass for my downhill. Now I'm gonna try to get it in two caps, but sometimes it doesn't happen like that in two caps. Now, I've been running five millimeters since I uh, put the hot pass on it with the four mil. Now I'm not the best welder, but I know what I'm going after and I know what to look for. I know what the inspectors want. 
Um, that's just it. I'll run a pass and then I'll run up that other side, but sometimes people can, you know, run this side and then run that side, depending on how hot your pipe is. Keep that pipe hot. This pipe is pretty hot at this point right now. Uh, it's actually super hot. But a lot of times you got to keep propane on it. You got to keep it at a certain degree. Right now I'm going to buff it off actually, and I'm going to do that other. I'm going to do my downhill side pass and finish this side up. All right, there's that first pass for that downhill. What my main goal is is just making sure I I stay straight on that edge down there and get across the bottom. And then see, I I tried to travel as far over as I could without it being too sloppy and that's about as far over as I got before it got too sloppy all right let me knock out this other pass on my downhill side so that way we can be down done with the downhill side and then once we're done with the downhill side we'll jump over to that uphill and we'll finish it on the uphill And I almost didn't think I was going to get it. I almost still feel like I'm not. Uh, I felt like it was almost too much to fill. All right, didn't really come out how I liked it, but. <laughs> I don't like it. Definitely need to get my welding skills up. Let me show you though, I ain't ashamed. There she is, I'll grind those two starts to tie into, but you know, I tried to keep it as straight as I could, as uniform as I could. And then I didn't come all the way over as far as I did on the first one. I just did shy of it because that's how I want my tie-ins on the bottom. Now it'll be time to do the low high. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. I've done worse, so I think I'm at a, uh, yeah, 55 on the remote. So on my cap on this side, I will run 332s. I'll actually drop my heat all the way down to about 30 to start, and we'll see where that's at and see if that's any good. Three thirty twos. We'll see if I can get it in two of them. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. I could already tell you I'm too cold. I'm gonna go up to about thirty five. I think I need to be. Uh, let's do let's do forty because that was just that was too cold for what I like. Usually I would grind that off. Yeah, it's too cold. I don't like it. Let me grab. I had to grind that pass off because I didn't like it at all. Not at all did I like it. So I'll just I'll just start over on 40 this time. Just remember, I'm still running in an uphill mode. I mean downhill mode. I haven't switched it over to uphill mode. Screw it. Let's just do it. Ooh, that pipe gets hot to hold on to. All right, let me not be dumb anymore. Let me go put it in uphill mode. I feel like downhill mode just killing me. Don't look too bad, but I don't like it. Said I was about 107 amps. I'm gonna go up 45. Need to be a little bit hotter, I think. Not hot enough. All 
Okay, maybe that was a little bit too hot. That was hot. I really need to get back out here and start welding some more on this low high. Oh, it don't look too bad though. I just had to cruise. Let me turn it down, back down to 40. Oh, low high mode's where it's at. Plus, I was coming across the top, but that felt so much better. Oh, yeah. It looks better, too. And 40's where it's at. Oh, yeah, that's where it's at. Definitely put it in uphill mode. About 107 amps is what I'm running there. I really like that. All right, let me show you something. This is real. So... There's that tie-in on the top. It runs a lot better in that uphill mode than in that downhill mode. Look, that downhill mode really makes it choppy. Really couldn't get my side to line them. Once I switched to uphill, it was really fine. Tuned on that side, so if that was my test, I would have grinded all that back out. But just showing you now the difference between running uphill and down mode, and then look at that. That's an arc mark. And I'm gonna explain what happens there and how to prevent that from happening. All right, so. What happens when you get that arc mark is, you know, we we run these V-stingers, right? And uh, you got to make sure that you pinch it just on that metal there. You don't want to pinch it on the slag. Because what happens when that slag breaks is that rod jolts. And that's what caused that arc mark there. That right there would be an automatic fail. They'd bust you out for that right there. So you don't want something like that to happen. So when you do, you know, like you'll see that flux kind of break off there. See? Make sure that you got a good, fine, you know, twist that rod. That's what I do. I like to spin it. There's a good little trick for you. Spin that rod and make sure that you got a good connection. And then it won't jolt on you. But sometimes when the stinger gets wore out, it'll jolt on you. So check your stinger, you know, and, and pay attention to that, all right? Now, you can't do this on a test. Nope, 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 nope. You can't. But I'm going to do it because... Showing you a demonstration here. Oh man, it's not dripping out my nose. It's real. I ain't messing around no more. About to finish this test out right here that I failed because I arced on it. So don't arc out. Don't be like me and be and make sure that you got it in in uphill mode when you go to do this. All right, let me finish this out real quick. I'm 40. That's 107 amps all the way from the bottom. That's what I like. Uh, that arc is so much better so don't be dumb and don't put it in downhill mode make sure you put it in uphill mode because it'll burn so much better and again remember that trick this is your test you don't want to arc out don't be dumb leave it in put it in uphill mode don't leave it in down don't be dumb Make sure that rod's in there. Don't be dumb. It's really good to learn how to take this test because on downhill, you long arc it, and on uphill, you keep a tight arc. So long arc, get tight arc. It's really good to learn how to do this hybrid test remember check it a lot of guys ask me like why don't I chip my slag I'll show you why I don't chip it chip it really because there's nothing really there I mean I fire up you know on the top of that of the top of the heavy slag and then I take off you know what I mean I mean I'll fire up up here and I'll drag down and then I'll touch about right here and then I'll take off you know I don't come way down here where all this slag is I start about right here 
and then I'll, and then I'll take off. All right, I'm almost there. I'm almost done. I, I maybe got one or two rods. And sometimes when I get up here, I like to switch to an eighth inch rod, but it'll deposit too much sometimes. So I just stick with the 332. Actually, there's quite a bit to fill. I think I will jump up to an eighth just to finish that last one. Slide just kind of falls right off. You'll see the difference between my first my first pass and my second pass compared to that, that downhill mode. I gotta turn my heat up about 55 for this one. Because it's eighth inch. I think for a second there it was almost too hot. Whoo, barely just got it flush there. It was almost undercut just a little bit. But it looks alright. Here it is. I mean it's not the prettiest, it's not the slickest. I may have not been the quickest, but it's it's good. I mean, most inspectors, most inspectors, not all inspectors, would, would pass it. I mean, I feel like my phone doesn't do it justice sometimes. But you can see the difference between the, the downhill mode and the uphill mode running that downhill, I mean, running that uphill rod. You know, even off the bottom, I felt the difference. Now I'm a little rusty. A little rusty crusty for sure <laughs> for sure for sure like I ain't trying to say I'm the best welder but you know give me a couple more of those tests or give me a couple more practices I'll get it all slicked out but that's what you guys need to be doing you need to be focused on getting that slicked out and doing that test and getting used to running a you know a long arc and then a tight arc and then you also got to make sure you're keeping this pipe hot too you know sometimes people have that that weed burner blowing through the pipe you know just keeping this test constantly hot and that's important bam that's my tutorial for you today i hope you enjoy it i hope you like it it's called the hybrid test out here half and half whatever you want to call it uh oreo cream of the crop top of the top whatever i mean you know it is what it is i call it the hybrid test one side's downhill one side's uphill and yeah it takes some time it takes some practice but if you get after it you know you can get it done man and you can see out here you know it's it's chilly it's cold but you don't need to be all bundled up making that test. You know, you can stay against that pipe and stay warm, man. That's what I was doing. So stay real, my people. I hope that helps you out, man. Realistically, that inspector is going to want you to, he's going to want you to buff that bead off anyways. Where I had to blow through and get it, got it. Looks like it's all... It's all tied in there. Looks good to me. I like it. Just wanted to show you guys. Just got done filming that. There you go.